crowd tonight. First cool game of the night. We've got uh, homecoming at Central and a whole parade of convertibles uh, passed by the stadium about an hour ago, including with the homecoming court, as I'm sure we'll have an extended halftime tonight. Yep, Central will receive the football like they did last week. Hopefully, uh, if you remember last week, they really got started on the bad foot. They couldn't handle the squib kick, and West took it in for a touchdown and uh, really never looked back en route to their 22-12 to victory last week. You know, uh, Pete, what's happened to Central a couple times this year already has they have mishandled kicks and given the ball back to the other team, so I'm sure Coach Verdon and his staff really worked hard on this. But the one thing, and you've been a kicker, Pete, especially with young kickers at high school, sometimes you never know where that ball is going to go. They spray it, right. and everybody has to be ready, it's including the front line, because I've seen times where a guy's hit a lineman on the opening kickoff and right. gotten the ball right back. Squib kick is something that is uncoachable because once the ball hits the ground, you have no control over it. Uh, looks like kicking off, kicking off for... Uh, Clinton, I'm not sorry, Clinton North is uh, the quarterback, Tom Handelman. And back deep for Central, looks like number three, Terrence Reed, the tailback. We'll be checking in with Bill Horrell here once we get a break as uh, Eric Hester fumbles it at the 12, picks it up, crosses midfield, going up the middle, breaks a couple of tackles, and is going to be brought down just shy of the 20-yard line. So Central will take over first and 10. Why don't we go out to Pleasant Valley, Bill? Thank you, Bill. Bill Harrell over at uh, Spartan Stadium in Pleasant Valley. Pleasant Valley 3, North Scott 0, midway through the first. Here, our first play from scrimmage, eye formation in the backfield. Quarterback Jones under center, turns around, hands it off to Reed. Reed across the 20 to the 25-yard line before he is brought down on the play by number two, Max Sheedy of the Wildcats. It'll be second down and about six for Central. And John. We, we did some complaining in the booth last week when we saw Central, and I'm kind of happy that Coach Verdon is starting in the I formation because that's where they were dominant last week. Right. I think early in the year, Pete, a lot of coaches get involved with shifting formations, unbalanced lines, which it looks like they're lined up in now, and they have too many guys yeah. on the field, and he lined up. Hole. And those are things you got to eliminate, and that's where Central struggled a little bit uh, last week. And Terrence Reed started out with a nice five-yard run, but they huddled with 12 guys yep. in the huddle, which... You can't do in, in football. Which they did last week once. Uh, well, that's tough. Reed with a nice five-yard gain. They have 12 guys in the huddle. Uh, number 20, um, Armando Rodriguez ran off into the sidelines. And you really, there's nothing inconspicuous about that. I mean, everyone's got to see that. Yeah, you, you uh, can't hide that. No, it's tough. Only thing you do is keep in the huddle and hope the officials don't see them. Second down and 10. Jones under center, eye formation. He'll keep it on the option. Pitch is a little high, but Reed manages to catch it at the 20, down the sideline to 30, to 35, to the 40 before he is tackled out of bounds by number 44, Zach Wilson of the Wildcats. So a big gainer, a 20-yard gain on second down and 10 for the Wildcats, all Terrence Reed. Yeah, Robert Jones is a very good option quarterback. We saw that last week. He did a nice job of getting the ball pitched after he read it, and a good run by Reed. First and 10 for the Wildcats, ball at their own 41-yard line. 11-10 to play in the first quarter, no score. Game's first possession for Central. I slot left, man in motion down the line of scrimmage. Quick pitch goes to Reed. Reed has trouble with it, fumbles it, and it looks like he got back on it. They're going to lose about four or five yards on the play. Well, Pete, Danport Central, again, needs to really execute their in their backfield. That was just a basic sweep play, and the ball was there, and Terrence Reed must have glanced with his eyes upfield before he looked it in and caught it and ended up being a loss of three or four. Second down and 14. Ball moves back to the 37-yard line, right in the middle of the field for Central, working toward the scoreboard, the north end, here at Brady Street Stadium, this time a one-back set. Twin receivers with the slot. Jones rolls out to the wide side of the field. Into the flat. Ball's a little bit too quick for Terrence Reed. And it'll be third down and long for the Blue Devils. Well, Central just ran a sprint out pass there, P, with the inside guy going to flat and the outside guy uh, running a cur curl. On, and big number 84, Marcus Terry, was wide open on the 
on the curl route, and Robert Jones just met, misread the coverage. Third down, 14 from the 37, no score. 10-20 to play in the first quarter. North visiting Central. I formation with a slot. Marcus Terry splits out. Jones under center. The pitch will go to Reed. Reed around left end. It's going to be hit right at the 41-yard uh, line. He's going to get back to the original line of scrimmage with a four-yard gain, but it's going to be fourth down and 10 as uh, Coach Mad Verdon will send the punting unit in for the Blue Devils. Back deep now for uh, the North Wildcats, number 20, Corey Overton, and he is going to be accompanied by number 24, Josh Santoro. Punt for Central, number 34, John Trenton Bibbs. Well, that was Ron Weldermuth on that last tackle. He really did a nice job filling inside out, and they did a good job of stopping Clinton with their defense last week. Bibbs punts, pretty good one, almost gets it to turn over. Taken at the 19, at the 24-yard line, up the field across the 40-yard line. Is where North will start, right near their own 45-yard line. That is number 20 on the return, Corey Overton. And number 51, Tony Hoyman hustled down there to make the tackle. And I tell you, Pete, uh, that's a nice tackle because open field tackles against uh, speedy returners aren't the easiest thing for linemen to do. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Tom Handelman. Under center as referees uh, blow the play dead. Uh, he'll have an eye formation in the backfield. Uh, the tailback will be Nick Rashal, and uh, the fullback is Javen Lovely. You know, last week they traded off with different combinations of guys at fullback and, and then the fullback tailback situation, but this week they're lining up Lovelady at the fullback spot. And number 21, Nick Rashal, who did play about half the game at tailback last week. First and 10, they'll go with a slot and a wide receiver out to the wide side of the field. Jesse McCauley is split all the way out. Handelman under center. Trap play to Lovelady. Lovelady, a little bit of running room, crosses the 50-yard line into central territory. Nice gain on first down of seven or eight yards for the Wildcats. Yeah, that's the same trap play that North got going a little bit last week, and they, Coach Hobbinick calling the offensive plays uh, for Davenport North. North started out with that play, a big gain of eight yards. Coach Hobbs. Hey, when I grow up, Pete, that's a guy I want to be just like. He's my hero. <laughs> Second down and two from the Central 47. This one to the tailback up the middle across the 45-yard line will be a first down for the Wildcats. Ball carrier number 21, Nick Rashal. Rashal with the first down for the Knights. Ooh, a lot of goodies. Well, Damport North is doing a good job of getting off the line. Sure. They're using some polling schemes and some trapping okay. schemes. Why don't we, they're getting uh, the central lineman up field, floor. and they're finding creases underneath them. Thank you very much. Wow, John, we have a lot of food up here. That's hot dogs and pork chops. Could be a big night. Play to Rashawn over uh, left end, and he crosses the 40 to the 35-yard line, very close to that first down marker. And we'll see where the referees spot the ball. Looks like he might be... A little about a yard short. It's going to be second down and one for the Wildcats. Excellent run that time by Nick Rashal. He's 5'11", 175 pounds. Uh, saw a little bit of crease, bounced it outside, and showed some speed there on the corner, Pete. Now lining up a tailback for the Wildcats, Corey Overton with Love Lady, the fullback. And Overton will take the pitch over right end, and he's going to be met probably shy of the first down marker. Nice play by number 71 for the Wildcats, Jordan Vargas. Well, Jordan Vargas was unaccountable there. Nobody blocked him. He just did a good job of reading the ball and put a big hit on him, and, and it looks like they may be short. It's going to be close, Pete. Officials timeout. They're going to bring over the chains. We'll get a chance to recognize some of our great sponsors. Well, we always want to thank uh, Hungry o Hobo. They're easy to find and hard to resist. And how about Molino Insurance? For all your insurance and financial needs, the only name you need to know is Molino. And they stretch out the chains. And it looks like it's going to be a little bit short. They need to get to the 34-yard mm, line. And the ball is going to be spotted right in between the, uh, the 35 and the 34. Here on the near hash, the Wildcats working toward the south end zone, away from the scoreboard here at the stadium. 
slot and a receiver to the same side, I formation. It looks like Overton will dot the I. Love Lady, the tight fullback. Love Lady on the trap play up the middle has a first down and a lot more as he is going to be brought down right around the 24, I'm sorry, 26, 27 yard line of Central. Well, they've ran a couple of traps and they've seen some success. Yeah, they really got a nice trap by Sean Peer. He's only 5'10, 185 pounds, but he used his quickness and he really got off the ball well. And right now you look at North, same offense they ran a week ago, Pete, just traps and some sweeps and a little bit of an ISO. Handelman under center. This time, Love Lady, the tailback, he'll take the handoff right up the middle and he'll push the pile across the 30, the 25 yard line. Penalty flags on the ground. Well, usually in that case, it's usually a holding call. We'll wait to see what they call. Holding the call against the offense. That'll move them back. Remind uh, WOC listeners tomorrow, big game for the Iowa Hawkeyes, uh, hosting Arizona State, a couple of top 20 ranked teams. Uh, Pre-game with Jim Aubrey, 3 p.m. Kickoff right around 5 p.m. Right here on WOC Talk Radio. 1420, Jim uh, Albrecht, Dan Kennedy tonight over on the uh, Celebration Bell, the Blues Cruise. Well, I hope they're motivated for that game. If Jim does a good pregame show, the Hawks will win. Twins to the short side of the field. Hanneman will bootleg out. He's going to el elude one tackler, finds an open receiver, still on his feet as he crosses the 30-yard line, brought out of bounds. Near the 25-yard line is number 23. It looked like Landon Shelton. Yeah, Tom Holliman really did a nice job. They bootlegged there, and he had a, a central Blue Devil right in his face, and he stepped underneath and, and really did a nice job of stepping back in the pocket. Good catch, good throw. Leon Gales will bring the play in from Coach Hobinick on the sideline. The offensive coordinator, Skip Eckhart, his first season as the North head coach, taking over from Mark Bloom, of course, who split, uh, split Davenport, went up to Clinton in June. I formation in the backfield, two receivers, Handelman on the toss, sweep to Love Lady, Love Lady to the 25 yard line. Met hard in the line of scrimmage by number 31 and 44, 31 for Central, 44 Javon Green. Well, right now, Central is hand handling most of the outside plays. Uh, North has had some success <clears> inside, <throat> and we'll see what Coach Hominick comes back on a big possession down here on third and about seven or eight. Third down and eight is what the scoreboard says, right at the 25 yard line, right in the middle of the field. I formation, Love Lady, the, the uh, fullback. We'll see if they give it to him on the trap. They don't. Handelman drops back to pass, looking in the flat. Nothing's going to be brought down from behind. He'll be hot, held shy of the first down. It's going to be fourth down and about five. Looks like he was looking deep into the end zone on a post pattern. It was number 22, Kedrick Tyson. And I think Central's going to go for it here. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, it looks like uh, that they definitely will. North uh, comes up over the ball. They'll probably try and throw some type of pass or screen. And last time, their protection just really broke down for them. Love Lady and Rashawn in the backfield. Handelman, quarterback, uh, bootleg. He stops, throws, and incomplete off of the fingertips of Landon Shelton. Shelton would have had a first down. Probably should have caught that one. Yeah, what happens on bootleg uh, passes, Pete, the quarterback needs to get the ball immediately out to the open receiver. And he was wide open, but there was a little bit of delay. Defensive back caught up, and the ball hit him in the hands, and he still dropped it. So North, about a 40-yard uh, opening drive of the game, stalls on down. Central in that big offensive line led by Vandervelde and Howard. The bookend tackles out on the field, Robert Jones will work in an eye wing, wing to the left, receiver to the right, and they'll give it to Jones up the middle. Jones running room, first down as he gets to the 35 yard line. A nice 13 yard gain for Terrence Reed. Yeah, Terrence Reed, that was just an inside ISO play. Downport Central coming right back, pounding the ball there at North. Great first down call for Downport Central. Again, we just didn't see enough of that last week. Well, we saw enough of it. They just need to do it more consistently and making sure that uh, there's not a lot of shifts and, and you know, sneaking the 12th guy into the huddle isn't a bad idea, but you just, you, as long as you don't get caught with it. First and 10 from the 35, Central on the move, I formation in the backfield. 6.20 to go in the first quarter, no score. Central's second possession as Jones drops back to pass. He's going to tuck it under and run. Nobody open, crosses the 40. Well, brought down right at the 40-yard line. He's going to have a gain of five yards. 
as we'll check out with uh, Bill Harrell at Pleasant Valley here in a, a couple of minutes. Well, that time, Pete Robert Jones off the play action fake. They tried to get the deep post route, and it wasn't there. And he, this is where he's good at. He can uh, make things happen off the scramble, and a good play by Robert Jones. Second down and six from the 35 for the Blue Devils. No score, 540 to play in the first quarter. Jones under center, he'll give it a read, read a lot of running across the 50, and he might be gone to the 30, the 20, the 10, touchdown central at the 530 mark. Oh, that is a 60-yard run for Terrence Reed. Oh, just a base tailback off tackle play with good lead blocking by the fullback. And if you give uh, Reed a crease, you see his explosive uh, speed. You know, last week Hart couldn't get, a, get away from the Wildcats, but Terrence Reed blew right by the Wildcat defense. Terrence Reed, a 60-yard run for the Central Blue Devils. They'll go up 6 to nothing. The point after touchdown attempt on its way from... Well, the kick is up, and it looks good from here. It splits the uprights. Let's go out to Pleasant Valley and check in with Bill Horrell. Nothing our score. Terrence Reed, a 60-yard run. Adam Mims, uh, the extra point was good. And he'll uh, kick it off right in the middle of the field from the 40-yard line, kicking toward the scoreboard, toward the north end of the stadium. He'll put his foot into it. It's a high, short kick. It's going to be taken right at the 10-yard line by Corey Overton. Overton up the middle. And he'll be brought down right around the 33, 34 yard line. So North is going to have decent field position to start off with, with 5.15 to play in the first quarter. Central, 7, North, 0. But right now, Pete, what you have is both offenses trying to establish yourself, and Central uh, found that crease. And you know, Terrence Reed has to be one of the fastest backs in the league this year, and he just you know got a got a seam and, and ran right by everybody on the field. I formation in the backfield. Twin receivers split out to the wide side of the field. Handelman on the bootleg again, looks down the field, looks down the field. He's got a man open, and it looked like maybe the tight end, and he dragged a couple of uh, tacklers with him across the 45. Well, who was that? Number 20. Okay, Brandon Smith will get credit for the reception. Yeah, Brandon's not a small guy either. He's 6'3", 230, and... And it looks like Coach Hominick likes the bootleg. That's three or four he's ran already, and they've had receivers open. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. Pitch goes to uh, Rashawn. Rashawn fumbles the football, but he gets it back. They're going to lose about three yards on the play, so it's going to be second down and long for the Wildcats. 4.45 to play in the first quarter. 7 to nothing. the score is central behind Terrence Reed's 60-yard run. Just about uh, a couple of minutes ago, uh, they lead the game, Central 7, North 0. Well, that was Javon Green flying around that last play, Pete, and he almost had a ball strip for a fumble there. Handelman under center, and they're going to run the uh, bootleg to the other side this time. He's got a man wide open down the field. If he can hit him, no, off his fingertips again is Landon Shelton, and uh, that's a couple that he really should have had. But you know, on bootleg passes, Pete, and this happens all the time when high school kids get open, they slow down instead of keep running at, at the right, you know, at a good speed and, and separate themselves from the defender, so they lost their timing on the play. The quarterback just let them a little bit too much, but uh, Sheldon has got to make some of their, Sheldon's got to make some of these catches, Pete. You always keep running when you're in the route. Third down in 13 from the 43. Again, I formation, twin receivers. Handelman sprints out, and he's going to be sacked on the play by number 31, Aaron Parker. Parker comes in untouched and sends Handelman down. Well, right now, Downport North is getting a little bit out of their game plan. I thought they'd get at right after Central at the running game like they did against Clinton. The bootleg passes have been there, though, Pete, wide open, but they're having some uh, trouble with their protection against the sprint out package. So, uh... North will be punting. Uh, Reed drops back deep, and a big lineman, number 78, in the punt. He kicks it a mile high. It's going to drop at the 40-yard line and bounce toward the central side. Central's going to have the ball about the 37-yard line in to do the punting. Big number 78, Justin Harper, a junior, 5'11", 250. I doubt he's 250. Looks a little bit more than 250 for me. Uh, depends what he had for lunch today, Pete. 
First and 10 for the Blue Devils. They lead 7 0, 330 to play in the first quarter. Again, the score at Pleasant Valley, PV10, North Scott 0. If you're at another game and want to report your score, go ahead and give Jeremy Link a call in our studio at 344-7040. That's 344-7040. First and 10 for the Blue Devils, I formation. Man in motion down the line of scrimmage. Terrence Reed on the pitch. Reed picks up a block. Got a lot of running room. The 45 to the 50. Nice tackles. He crosses into Wildcat territory. And Central got the running game going tonight. They'll have it first and 10 at the Wildcat 47-yard line. That looked like number 20, Corey Overton, 5'10", 165, senior coming up making the tackle. But Central is mixing it up a little bit with four formations now, Pete. They're, I think right now they're running that end over formation that's uh, causing a little bit of problems to North. Yep. In, man in motion down the line of scrimmage. Reed right up the middle. He's going to be uh, held for about a three-yard game. And, and when you say man over in the formation. They've got the center, and then they've got basically four linemen to the side of the center. Yeah, they're running an unbalanced line, then they take their tight end and, and line them opposite of the two tackles, and that's a lot of beef that on is. that right side line with, uh, you know, Vandevilde and, and Howard. Those are big guys. And they come out in the same formation again, Howard and Vandervelde side by side at the end of the line. And it's a passing set. Jones drops back to pass. Hits Terry. Terry doesn't look at the ball. It's intercepted on the play by number 24 for the Wildcats. And he's going to return it to the 35-yard line. Nice job on the play by Josh Santoro. Santoro's interception return. As uh, Terry just he didn't look for the ball. No, they ran that post play earlier, and it doesn't look like Terry has the speed to really separate himself deep in the secondary. And Josh Santoro just read the quarterback's eyes, had a great ball break there, and a big pick for the North High Wildcats. First and 10 for North. Uh, I think a trap up the middle, I guess, is what that was. Uh, Love Lady uh, has a gain of about four yards. It's going to be second down. 2.15 two to play in the first quarter. 7 0 in the score. Central on top of North. Terrence Reed had a 60 yard run midway through the first quarter. Second down and five for the Wildcats. I formation in the backfield. Pitch goes to Ration. Penalty flag on the play. He'll cross the 40 yard line where he'll be uh, brought down by Central. Nick Rashal, the ball carrier. Uh, probably another hold possibility here, Pete. But for Shaw, if they're going to run that sweep play, he's got to get in the hole and get back out. He's dancing around a little bit too much uh, on the wide side of the field. Julian Vandervelde checks back into the lineup. 6'4", 290 is what they list him at in the program. He'll play a he'll play full time on offense and uh, part time on defense. You know, when you see those uh, big guys at from Central. And they have them on both sides of the line. I think grocery bill. I wonder what it is per month to feed some of those kids. You know, Vandervelde, Vandervelde, 6'4", 290. Uh, A.J. Lizenby, 6'1", 315. You, know. you got guys like Corbin, 330, playing on the offensive line. Howard, 6'6", 265 is what he's listed as. Second down and long for the Wildcats. Three-step drop, open receiver on the play is Kedrick Tyson. Tyson crossed the 40 to the 45, and he's going to have a Wildcat first down. That was a real nice pass play there. They just kind of ran like a cross route, scissors route there, and, and the quarterback, Holloman, did a good job of reading it, and uh, uh, Kedrick Tyson, Kendrick Tyson was wide open. Good play for the Wildcats. First down and 10 from the uh, north 45. Wildcats on the move. A minute and a half to play in the first quarter, 7 0 in the score. Central leading north. Handelman, the toss sweep as Rashal is going to be dropped near midfield for a gain of about three or four yards. Uh, Rashal, just a junior. Yeah, Central continues to do a good job against the North High sweep play. It's the inside plays. The trap play has been good for North so far, and when they do uh, have time to throw the pass, they've had receivers wide open. One minute to go in the quarter. Central 7, North 0. North with the ball right at the 50-yard line. Second down and 6. On the reverse, 
And it looks like uh, Overton will take the uh, handoff. He's got a lot of running room across the 40 to the 35 to the 30 yard line from Central. As Coach Hobbs breaks out the reverse. Uh, he's mixing it up. He had I twins in the boundary, ran the sweep. Overton came around, and what Overton did a great job with, Pete. A lot of guys would keep running that wide, and he cut it right back up through the middle there and found a big crease in the central defense and a nice run by Corey Overton. First and 10 from the 31-yard line of Central. North on the move. 45 seconds to go in the quarter. Central leads 7-0. I formation in the backfield. A slot with the receiver. Rashal up the middle, off of left tackle. Nice looking play. Good size hole. He'll cross the 25 yard line to the 24 yard line. That's going to be second down. And Wildcat. As the clock winds down, they don't have to, but it looks like they will. Again, I formation, Love Lady the fullback, Rashal the tailback. And penalty flags fly. Looks like somebody might have lined up in the neutral zone. Well, Norris got back to the basics again, Pete. They're just lining up in one formation. They're running their base offense, uh, uh, you know, running the inside game, and then coming back with the passing game. Offsides called against the defense as well, that'll move up the ball up five. It's going to give him a first down. Yeah, that hurts when uh, North didn't even have to snap the ball to get a first down and, and to line up in the neutral zone before the other team's hardly taking the line of scrimmage is, you know, not a uh, real heads-up play by the Blue Devils. I formation. As, ooh, met hard wow. in the backfield is number 20, the ball carrier, Corey Overton. He lined up a tailback. Is that, is it a little switching around? They didn't have Love Lady in. They gave him a break, but now he's going back in. We'll take a commercial timeout. Our score after one, Central 7. North Zero, it's Mac Football here on WOC Talk Radio 1420. Twenty two yard line, they trail central seven to nothing. It's second down and twelve as they'll run a trap play up the middle as Lovelady just moving the pile, just walking with his strong legs. He'll get back. Well go inside the twenty yard line. It'll be third down and probably nine for the Wildcats. Well, big number seventy, Matt Frederick uh, made the tackle on that play, and another tiny guy for Danport Central, six four, two seventy feet. Man, a lot of beef. We'll uh, check in with Bill Harrell over at Spartan Stadium for another update for North Scott and Pleasant Valley. Why don't we do that right now? Penalty flags on the play. Bill, nothing nearing the end of the first half. Pleasant Valley on top of North Scott. Wow. Penalty flag was against Central. 
move them up five yards. It'll be third down and five from the 15. They'll run the tailback up the middle. Not a whole lot of running room. He's going to be a uh, stop shy of the first down marker. Only gains about two yards. So it's going to be third. It's going to be fourth down. Fourth four down and about two. So another tough call. Big possession down for North and uh, Lovelady, the big tailback, uh, limped off the field, Pete. And, and when you oh. have a running back 6'2", 235, you really need him in here on a fourth down situation. Now the fullback is uh, Ezekiel Davis for North. Fourth down. Option play, Rashawn, Rashal, and he's going to cut it up. He'll have the first down as he crosses the 10-yard line. But that was in doubt there when he was stringing it out. But he gets the first down. It'll be a first and goal for North. Yes, Lovelady on the bench, favoring one of his legs. Well, Davenport Central's defense really did a nice job there, stringing the option playoff. And what you really need on that is your, you know, your defensive pursuit, Pete, to get there a little bit quicker. And they didn't. And Rashal did a good job of lowering his shoulder, even though he took a big hit. He got a first down for for the Wildcats. First and goal, ten and a half minutes to play in the half. Seven and nothing the score. Central on top of North. North driving. Handoff. Rashal. Rashal tries to bounce it outside, but doesn't get much. Maybe a yard or two on the play. Brought down nicely from behind by Javon Green. Well, Damport Central's defense is trying to step it up here against the Wildcats running game. And this is a big drive here for Skip Eckert and his, and his uh, North High offense. 10 minutes to play in the half. Central leads 7-0 North inside the 10. Second down and goal. Quick pitch. Rashal. Rashal cuts it up. Got a lot of green and is close to the goal line. He fumbles the ball. The ball goes into the end zone. We'll see what the, no, the referees are going to blow it dead. But they're going to have the ball inside of the one-yard line. Third and goal. Well, that was a great read that time by Nick Rashal. He found the inside crease. He it really exploded through there. And I thought maybe he got in, but his knees hit first there, Pete. And that's why they didn't call, they didn't call the fumble either. So uh, third and goal, big call. We'll see if uh, Coach Hobb will elect with, to go with the quarterback sneak. His lanky, the lanky quarterback is 6'4", Tom Handelman. And he uh, stretches out into the goal. And it's a touchdown for North. At the 9.20 mark of the second quarter, North on the scoreboard. The score now 7-6. to six. Extra point pending. And I believe Handelman will uh, do those duties as well. Well, he definitely used his height on that play, Pete. He tried to put over the end zone about two or three times. Finally, the officials gave him the six. As Tom Hedelman kicks up. It is good. All seven points on that drive belong to him. Seven to seven the score. 920 to play in the first half. We'll take a timeout. It's Mac Football here on WOC Talk Radio 1420. <clears throat> Tom Handelman's kick squibs it down and uh, it's going to be taken at the five yard line by Terrence Reed. Reed up the far sideline to the 30, taking out of bounds right around the 32 yard line. Penalty flags on the return. Our score here North 7 and Central 7. North just got on the scoreboard with a quarterback sneak from Tom Handelman. We got Couple of scores to pass around. Muscatine 20, Burlington 7, midway through the second quarter, and up in Clinton, Assumption 20, and Clinton 3 in the second quarter. The sophomore score to that game was uh, Clinton 34, Assumption 0, which is kind of a surprise. Yeah, Assumption sophomore started out with two big wins, but according to my scout, Jeff West down in Clinton, he said, uh, Assumption could, couldn't muster much offense down there in the sophomore game. How about a word from our sponsors, John? Okay, let's thank one of my favorite people, L&W Betting. Rest easier, Quad Cities, at L&W Betting, Iowa and Illinois. First and 10 for Central. Uh, the penalty win against the Blue Devils. That'll push him back to the 20-yard line. Reed up the middle, fighting for uh, yardage. He uh, gets about four or five yards before he is brought down on the play look like number number 44 Zach Wilson in on the stop for 
the Wildcats. 9-13 to play in the first half. Our score, Central 7, North 7. And uh, looks like the right ankle is being taped for uh, Javon Lovelady, who is on the north sideline. They're going to need him in this ballgame big time. Second down and five from the 25. Again, an eye formation. Reed up the gut. Not a whole lot of running room. That one's uh, stuffed out right near the line of scrimmage. You know, Downpour North is uh, trying to toughen up, uh, try and stop Terrence Reed. Uh, they're doing a good job with the inside surges. Looks like uh, Coach Eckert's trying to move his line a little bit more and get some better movement out of him. Third down, big third down and uh, third and four play coming for Central from their own 26. Jones looks around, barks out an audible. Keeps it on the option, picks up a block from Howard, pitches it to Reed, Reed across the 30 to the 35-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Devils. Well, Central does a nice job with their option play, and, and it looks like it's going a little bit better for them this week and uh, last week, and that was just a good job. And Terrence Reed, if you can get him on the corner, uh, he has excellent speed, and he just kind of ran away from one of the North's defensive backs on that play. A very good running back. First and 10, ball at the 35-yard line on the near hash. The Wildcats now working north to south. Here at Brady Street Stadium, away from the scoreboard. Jones to Reed. Reed right up the middle. Gets about five yards on the play. It's going to be spotted right at the 40-yard line of Central, so it'll be second down and five for the Wildcats. Part right. of the, uh, the Blue Devils. Blue Devils. And Coach uh, Matt Vern really likes this unbalanced line tonight. He likes those big linemen all over <laughs> on the one side, and they're trying to use their weight advantage to pound the ball at a little bit smaller Wildcat defense. Illinois fans, tomorrow your kickoff against California, 11 a.m. over on AM 1270 WKBF. Second down and five, seven and a half to play in the half. Seven to seven the score. We're all knotted up, Central and North, as it looked like big Mr. Howard jumped on the play so that'll move him back five yards it'll be third down and it'll be second down and ten for central also uh next week's game will be right back here at the old stadium for bettendorf and north and that depending on what happens tonight could be a pretty big ball game yeah it really could mm -hmm. and uh right now central is doing a nice job of moving the ball but this has been a fairly evenly matched game and you can tell by the score p, p with it seven to seven so uh, both teams uh are looking better than they did a week ago. That's right. Third, second down and 10. This time two receivers set with a slot and a fullback. Jones under center and I and he pulled away like he thought the snap was coming a little earlier but no one else moved. Uh, number 71 Jordan Vargas is the center. I think he had the snap count right and uh, Jones must have forgot it. You'll see that every once in a while. Well, I tell you, from a coach's standpoint, Pete, this is something you don't really like. You're at second and five. Right. You haven't snapped the ball yet, and it's second and 15. So those are little things that really hurt offenses. And that's what Assumption did Saturday night. Whenever they got inside the uh, 20, the 30-yard line of Muscatine, they always went back five or 10 yards, and uh, it really cost them a couple of touchdowns. They put up field goals, but field goals didn't win it in the end. Well, knowing the snap counts always important in football. <laughs> Second down and 15. Jones deep down the sideline. Throws it up and it's going to be broken up by Terry. Terry had to play defense on the play. Uh, would have been a sure interception for the North defensive back. Why don't we go out to uh, Spartan Stadium again? Bill Harrell, what do you got? Thank you, Bill. His report from uh, Spartan Stadium. 17 to nothing the score. PV on top of North Scott as Reed takes the pitch, finds the sideline. Up the sideline, it's going to be brought down as he crosses the 50 yard line, and he almost broke that one again. It's going to be first and 10 for the Blue Devils in North Territory. Ball will be spotted at the North 48 yard line. We've got six and a half to play in the half. Our score is seven to seven. You know, Terrence Reed's got that glide speed. Doesn't look like he's really accelerating, and all of a sudden he just explodes, Pete. And he, I, right now there probably isn't a back as fast as him in the entire league. First and 10. And he's got to be approaching 100 yards. 
two receiver set with the slot. Looks like the with the fullback, Stratton Summers. Let's see if we see him on this play. Yep. We do up the middle. Summers, a nice gain across the 40 yard line to the 39 of North. Yeah, Damport Central's offense just moving now, and they're using that, that the big offensive line to get things going. Stanton Summers, his first carry of the night, but uh, looked like he got about seven or eight yards beat. Second down and three, ball at the 41-yard line of North. 5.45 to play in the first half. Seven to seven to score. Twin receivers split out to the wide side of the field. Second down and three, Jones under center. Man in motion down the line. It's going to be a trap up the middle for Summers. Summers crosses the 40 near the 35-yard line before he is tripped up from behind. It's going to have a first down for Central. Well, Central used a new wrinkle in their formation there. They went unbalanced with an end over and they had a little bit of motion and ran a straight dive play at North. Caught him a little bit off, you know, a little, a little bit by surprise. Central looks a little bit more disciplined than that. They do right now. They, they're yeah. start, their offense is starting to get in the sink. First and 10 for the Blue Devils' eye formation. Reed will dot the eye. We'll see if he gets the handoff. He does right up the middle. But he's going to be met right at the line of scrimmage. Nice play by the front seven for North, led by number 71. That, of course, Andre Hearn. Yeah, he did a nice job. And uh, uh, Shane Loft, uh, six foot, 170-pound senior, came in from his uh, linebacker position, put a nice hit on it. Uh, on the running back also. Five minutes to play in the first half. Our score, seven to seven. The last update from Pleasant Valley by Bill Horrell was PV 17, North Scott nothing at half. Second down and nine. Again, that uh, spread formation with a slot and a fullback. And Summers right up the middle, untouched as he crosses the 30 yard line to the 25 to the 23 yard line before he is brought down. Just a quick hitter up the middle. It'll be first and 10 for the Blue Devils. Well, they must be trying to rest Terrence Reed because that's three times in a row. Stan Summers uh, touched the ball, and he's doing a nice job. They found they found some three times in a row inside on the Wildcat defense. Javen Lovelady up walking around with his shoes on. They taped his right ankle. He is uh, still trying to uh, get the kinks out of that right ankle. We'll see if we see him on the next possession for the Wildcats. For Central, I formation, man in motion down the line of scrimmage. Strand Summers up the middle, quick hitter. Crosses the 20-yard line all the way down to the 17-yard line. It's going to be second down and about five or six for the Blue Devils. Clock running, four minutes to play in the first half. We have a tie score, seven to Central, North and Central from Brady Street Stadium. It's our MAC game of the week. A couple other scores to pass around, pass along. Uh, Muscatine 20, Burlington 7 midway through the second quarter, and Assumption 20, Clinton 3 midway through the second quarter. Second down and 6 from the 19. Summers up the middle once again, and I think that play might have run its course on that play as uh, he gets stood up at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they did. Uh, North's defense didn't get fooled at all there, Pete. They, they saw that play now three or four times in a row. Brings up uh, another possession down. Big play for the Blue Devils. Third down and th four, it looks like, for Central. Ball at the 17 of North as a late substitution comes in for Central. That's and, always scary. Yep. Well, it's a new fullback, and I think they're going to call a timeout. But it looked like Stan Summers had a little bit of yeah. equipment problem, so he had to come running off uh, the field, so they tried to hustle in. Uh, their backup fullback, Javon Green, and, and the, really what Vern did right there was pretty smart. Took a timeout to get them reorganized. Hey, Pete, this is a good time to thank some of our sponsors. Mississippi Valley Regional Blood Center, the lifeblood of our community, the 11th Street Bar and Grill, home of the famous Tenderloin, and don't forget Home Hardware, Downport's oldest and best hardware store. Listen to the Hardware Guys, Saturday mornings at 930 on WOC. How about a couple more? Well, Pete, there's Maxwell's transmission uh, for people. Play from the sidelines. High formation with the slot on the right side of the formation. Looks like uh, we have the unbalanced line on the left side, maybe. They'll send the man in motion there. Reed will take the pitch. Left side, he's going to be stopped nicely right at the line of scrimmage by the short corner on the play number two, Max Sheedy. No gain on the play. 
Well, that was an excellent outside run, Phil, there by Max Sheedy. He's not a big kid, 5'8", 165, but there's been a lot of Sheedy's that have played at Davenport North and have played pretty well, and there's some that uh, I think we're playing at St. Ambrose. TJ. Yeah. Fourth down and four. Central will go for it. Read the tailback. Jones audibleizes at the line. Man in motion across the line. Reed. Reed is going to be stopped shy. He's going to be stopped shy of the 15 yard line. He gains a yard on the play, but North will take over. Big stop for the Wildcats. That's a huge stop for him right there. Damport Central had their offense going. They were controlling the ball, controlling the clock, but Damport uh, North Wildcats defense stepped up and had a huge play right there, Pete. Mm. It'll be first and 10 for North. Game tied, 7 to 7. We got two and a half to play in the quarter. Javon Lovelady. Does not check into the ball game. Doesn't even doesn't even have his helmet with him. Has Handelman on the naked bootleg rolls out, finds a guy in the flat, and it's completed on the play across to the 22-yard line to number 43. That is Brandon Smith. Brandon Smith, a pretty thick, strong-looking tight end, a senior, 6'3", 230 pounds. I wouldn't doubt that. Uh, Terrence Reed trying to do it on both sides of the ball. He made the tackle there on the play, Pete. Second down and a short four. Under two minutes to play. Seven to seven the score, North and Central. Locking horns here at the big stadium tonight. I formation. Handelman rolls out again on the bootleg. Finds a guy back in, and it's gonna be almost picked off on the play, not quite. Deflected nicely by Eric Hester. Pass was intended on the backside for Brandon Smith. As Hester just uh, got in front of uh, Smith and uh, nearly picked it off. Yeah, it looked like he knew that ball was coming. He was reading the quarterback's eyes, and he had a nice break, but he just missed time that one, Pete. Otherwise, Eric could have had a chance at a big pick. Third down and four. And if you're north, you really don't want to punt it away here this late in the first half. Handelman drops back to pass. Has a guy open in the flat. It is caught at the 30. Up the sidelines, breaks a tackle. Penalty flag on the play. Tackled near the 45-yard line is Nick Rashal. Well, Coach Hobanek gave uh, a little bit new formation there. They came out with trips to the wide side of the field, but it looks like the penalty is going to be against the Wildcats. Yep, I believe it was holding or blocking in the back. And this one is going to come back. Well, they may end up. Uh, we'll have to see because they had, an, you know, after the catch they had the first down. We'll see how they uh, tack on this penalty here. Yeah, I believe it's blocking in the back. We'll see where they start from. They're going to mark the ball. First down. So it'll be a first down at the 29. I guess it was holding. So I think they marked it 10 yards back. And Central's a little confused in the defensive backfield. Three receiver set this time from North. First and 10. A minute and a half to go. Clock running. Handelman into the flat. Rashal catches it up the 40-yard line to the 42, 40, 44-yard line before he is stopped out of bounds by number 26 and number 44, Javon Green for Central. Well, North's in their hurry-up offense, and uh, what they're trying to do, Pete, is they're getting those three wide receivers out there. And the last two times, they really ran crisp routes, and they had good spacing, and that's really important. Timeout taken by Central. We'll uh, check in with some of our great sponsors, John. Well, let's thank the Orthopedic and Rheumatology Associates. Excellent in sports. The conference, I think, is going to be a pretty good football league this year. It looks like the teams that have been on the bottom in the past are, are a lot better, and they're going to challenge and, and make some runs at the teams that have been in the top. Look at this. Shotgun formation for the Knights. Handelman about six yards deep, and he's going to take a one step back, looking up the field for Overton, and it's thrown a little long, and he almost makes a one-handed catch near the sidelines. Actually, that's Santoro. But the clock will stop, 115 to play. They got second down and 10. Ball is at the 44 of North. Shotgun. Yeah, that's not a bad call. After, after the timeout, they decided to come back and try and go for a big play and see if they can get Central's uh, defense snapping. But good coverage there by the Blue Devil secondary. Same formation, three receivers, a tailback. And referees are going to blow the play dead, I believe. Someone has lined up off sides, and I think it might be this guy on the end here for North. Number 42, either that or it's number one. But offsides is the call, lining up in the neutral zone. 
North will go back five yards. So we'll remind listeners about the point after presented by Hungry Hobo Thursdays at 6 p.m. on Fox Sports Radio 1230. Myself and Mike Coquit talk about the local high school football scene. Uh, last night we had Luke Federson on, and today he kindly put on his uh, website some information about the show. That's the point after 6 p.m. Thursdays. Handelman, oh, oh, hit hard in the backfield. Where's the football? And it's still loose on the carpet, and who comes up with it? It looks like North has got it, but Julian Vandervelde, I believe, was the guy in the backfield who applied a really big hit on Handelman. Yeah, that was a little bit of a bone crusher there, and, and with that contact, the ball also came out, and North was very lucky. They got they pounced right back on that ball. Right, Overton had a chance to pick it up, and he actually did take a few steps with it before he was hit. The ball was knocked out of his hands, and then uh, rolled a few feet away from him, and uh, then a mad scramble ensued where he had about 10 guys piled up for the little football, and uh, North came through with it, but it's going to be third down. 30 seconds to play in the half. Handelman in the shotgun. Three receiver set. Wide. Uh, oh, he's going to go down the field, and this one's going to be almost picked off on the play, not quite, as that, that uh, pass really sailed away from Handelman, intended for Leon Gales, as uh, this, it was a bad snap, and uh, the play just didn't look, didn't look good from the start. So Central's going to get the ball back with... Uh, Probably about 15 seconds to play as uh, Hobbinick stops the big quarterback on his way to the sidelines and uh, kindly goes over a few things. And it looks like Central is going to try and set up for every t turn. You have a decision here. Do you go for the big block and rush everybody, but they have two deep, so we'll see if they can get one. The punt is high. It's a wobbler. It's going to bounce at the 41-yard line. Reed will stay away from it. Probably should have picked it up because uh, time is running. They're only going to – they're not going to touch it. And the referee's not going to, okay, now he blows it dead. Eight seconds to go in the ball game, or in the first half. But we'll see what uh, Matt Verdon elects to do with the eight seconds. Well, that was a nice job by the North High punt team, Pete, because they got the ball out of there. They got it on the turf, let it roll. They didn't touch it right away, and they ran down quite a few seconds as that ball continued to roll on the turf. Eight seconds to go. We'll see what North chooses to do. First and 10. And they're going to take a knee and head to the locker room, satisfied with a 7-7 seven to seven halftime score. So we'll uh, take a timeout here as the half comes to us. The score, 7 for North, 7 for Central, and a pretty even, even first half. We'll uh, check out some scores from around the area. Again, if you're at a game and listening to us, thanks a lot for uh, joining in. If you got a cell phone, give Jeremy a call in the studio at 344-7040. We'd love to hear your score. So
week or two they're building a brand new uh, weight room hmm. uh, and that will be beautiful and our baseball field p 1.5 right. million dollar project should be done here uh, by the first of november adam mims kick off in the third quarter goes right up the middle almost untouched across the 35 yard line to the 40 yard line is number 20 of the wildcats and that's just going to excite north even more corey overton on the big return he almost broke that yeah, Corey Overton has showed up a few times here. He has some good speed, Pete, just about uh, broke that one. But even though he didn't, that's a nice return for the North, Scott Wild or North High Wildcats to begin the half. <laughs> first and 10, 7-7 seven seven the score. First play of the third quarter. North on offense, ball at their own 40-yard line. I formation in the backfield. Handoff goes to the tailback, number 21, Nick Rashal. Rashal has had a lot of carries tonight. Probably doesn't have a whole lot of yards. Uh, if you were to look at the stats, uh, they did a nice job bottling him up, but uh, uh, he's been uh, he's been effective, just not in the, the terms of getting large amounts of yards. And we keep calling the name of Javon Green, number 44, the inside linebacker for the Blue Devils. He's really uh, been all over the place right now, and a lot of tackles here. And Javen Lovelady uh, still uh, on the bench, not in action, and he's actually sitting on a trainer's table as we speak, up the middle. Rashaw Rashaw has a first down as he punishes his way forward. A nice eight yard gain right at the 50 yard line. Yeah, some real nice blocking that time by Steve Toff, six foot 220. And number 73, Kyle Ward, 5'11", 260. The Wildcat line we saw last week peak took over their game in the second half and really started getting after it and got the running game going. First and 10 from the 50, 11 minutes to play in the third quarter. Seven to seven the score, North and Central. I formation up the middle and tripped up as he crosses the 45 yard line is I believe Overton Corey Overton uh, the tailback and he almost broke that one if he's not tripped up he might still be running yeah, that was second down and short for just the a sh uh, just a shoestring tackle there by one of the Blue Devils and that could have been a huge gain for Downport North second down and one from the 40 yard line north into central territory overton over to the right side he's going to be stood up shy of the line of scrimmage he's going to lose a yard it'll be uh third down and short for the wildcats and that was number 44 again von green all over the field making another tackle for the blue devil <clears throat> as injured uh, blue devil on the play number 31 arab parker down will go out to spartan stadium bill horrell Wow. Well, right now, if you're North Scott, you know you're backed up a little bit, so now they're throwing the ball and, and things like that. And, and I think the Pleasant Valley's defense is that good, Pete, and uh, obviously they got a big pick there. Third and short from the 41-yard line, I formation. We'll see if Rashal gets the pitch. No, it's going to be the fullback up the middle. He's going to be stopped right at the 40-yard line. This one's going to depend on the spot. Ball carrier, the fullback for North. Number 41, it looks like, his first carry of the night for Dan Andreessen. And then getting off the pile again for the Blue Devils, Javon Green. Javon's 5'11", 190. Uh, he's been all over the field tonight, and he's been a real uh, run stopper for the Blue Devils. And the referees are uh, going to stop the clock, bring the chain gang on to measure this one out. Will it be fourth and short or first and ten for the Wildcats? It's going to be... First and 10. So Andreessen gets the yard that they need. As Coach Skip Eckhart talking it over with one of the North assistants on the sideline. Coach Merb Hobanek brings the play in. Ira Gooch to his right. Well, North is just trying to control the ball right now with the running game. First and 10. I formation. Twin receivers. Number 21, the ball carrier. Nick Rashaw up the middle, a nice gain, another first down, about 13 yards on the first down. You know, he's really not being touched until uh, he gets tackled by a defensive back. Yeah, that was a real nice football run, even though they, he had that hole in there, Pete, and he got through it. But in the last three or four yards, he did carry a couple Blue Devils, and nice run by Nick. First and 10 for North. Rashaw gets the call again. Over right guard, not much going on. He's going to be stopped with about a one or two yard gain. 9.30 to play in the uh, third quarter, 7-7 seven to seven the score. North 
moving in central territory. He was tackled there by Matt Frederick, 6'4", 270. And guess who? Javon Green, the inside linebacker for the Blue Devils. Second down and nine from the 27. And uh, North pitches it back to Overton. Overton around right end gets to the 25-yard line before he is tripped up on the play by big number 70, Matt Frederick, 6'4", 270. Yeah, right now it's just a matter of, uh, you know, we've North has done this and Central has done it. They've had nice long drives, and then as they get close to the goal right now, they're at the 25-yard line. It looks like about third and seven or third and eight. We'll see what uh, call that Coach Hobbinick can come up with. Well, big down. If they don't get it, they'll probably go for it here on fourth down. So one really big down here. We'll, uh, and uh, I formation for North. like somebody might have lined up off sides. Uh, Nick Rashal is on the sidelines limping. Wow. Here, uh, so that's why we have we have offsides called against Central. So this third down play is going to be a little bit easier. We'll what? see who lines up in the tailback spot for North. And we'll see how deep uh, the Wildcats are. I know they have good athletes, and they look like they had good speed, and uh, they'll find out, you know, <laughs> who's the third string tailback is now. I believe we are looking at uh, Corey Overton, who's been playing a lot of uh, slot and receiver tonight. And again, uh, the backup running backs, both fullback and tailback. Overton plunges into the line on the left tackle, and he uh, pushes the pile up to the 15-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for uh, North. Yeah, that was a nice hard run there by Overton, and they're getting some nice blocking again uh, from number 76, uh, Byron Stokes, uh, 6'3", 260. Now uh, Nick Rochelle checks back into the ballgame along with another fresh face in the backfield, number 40, Josh McCarthy. McCarthy will line up at fullback. Rashaw behind him, dots the eye. Rashaw up the middle, dances at the line of scrimmage, stumbles, and falls forward right at the 15-yard line for a gain of about a yard. It's going to be second down in nine. We got eight minutes to play in the third quarter, seven to seven the score. North on the move, deep in central territory. Ball at the 15-yard line, second down in nine. Well, Central had a great line surge on their defensive line that time, Pete, and it caused uh, Overton to kind of shake a little bit, and he couldn't find a hole to get through. On second down, they'll pitch it to Rashaw. Rashaw will cut it back to the middle. Penalty flag on the play. Thrown by the side judge. You know, it's amazing in high school football, Pete. These guys work all week. They go, you know, on their discipline and, and things like that, getting off the ball. Then they march all the way down the field, and all of a sudden, when it's time to get paid, all these little penalties come up. Holding a preliminary signal from the head official. As North will, uh, their huddle will move back a little bit. Holding is the call. It'll go back 10 yards. It'll be second down. And instead of having it at the 15, now they have it at the 25. Well, Pete, this is a good time to thank Hungry Hobo. They have 11 convenient Quad City locations, including the newest store at 4810 Elmore Avenue in Davenport. I formation, second down. Handelman drops back to pass, bootleg over the middle. Receiver open, cannot quite hook up with him. Uh, intended receiver was Corey Overton. And if there's one knock we've had on Central's offense tonight, it's the receivers and the quarterback just aren't quite in sync. Yeah, Pete, that's, uh, that's North's offense. but North's well, offense. Right, and it's these blue helmets. Everybody has right. both blue helmets on. but Too much blue. They ran a bootleg route there, and they had a fullback in the flat and then no other receivers, and I think a receiver possibly ran a wrong route because when you boot, you'd like to have two or three guys you know, to throw to. Third and 19 from the 25 for North Hamlin, a two-step drop across the middle, and a pass incomplete for Jesse McCauley. It was a simple slant pass right across the middle. And it's going to be fourth down, and uh, the central coaches liking what they have seen so far. And North is going to punt. It's, it's fourth and 19. I mean, that's that's It'd a be tough, tough call to, for. Not, actually, they're going to kick a field goal. Right, the, it'd be uh, tough to punt here with the, the field ball goal the block. Tom Handelman in to try a 42-yard field goal attempt. He is not quite in the middle of the field. He's more on the uh, far hash, so he's going to be kicking. Um, right to left, just slightly. 42-yard attempt. 
The snap, the hold, the kick, it's up. It's got it's long enough. It looks good from here. No, oh. no good. 42 yard attempt goes. I'm not sure which way that tail must have tailed off to the uh to the near side, wide left, I think I'm gonna call that. Yeah, because Coach Eckert for North, he was kind of, you know, kind of like a golf shot, Pete. He was kind of looking yeah. at it and thinking that, you know, it was through, and he asked the official, and I guess it did just miss to the left side of the goalpost. And the official comes over and explains his case to Coach Eckhart, and uh, he accepts it and walks away. First and 10 for Central. So Central has dodged a pretty good bullet. They've got the ball at their own 25-yard line with seven minutes to play in the third. Option pitch goes to Terrence Reed. Reed is going to be stopped for about a three-yard loss. Not much going on on the option play. Excellent job by North. Uh, defensive backs flying up to make the stop. Yeah, that was number 12, Kyle Posey, a junior, 5'10", and all of 140. But that's how you come up against an option play. He, he really did a super job of filling that in, and he uh, you know, got away from the blocker and a big play for Downport North. And uh, is Coach Eckhart and Coach Hobnick uh, sharing some words together? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Second down in 15 from the 21. Jones under center. Man in motion down the line. He's going to give it to the fullback up the middle. A lot of running room. Crosses the 30-yard line to the 32-yard line. Uh, that's just their trap play again. They had going in the first, late in the first half, Pete, and they came right back, got it going again. Stanton Summers with another nice run. Third down and three, we'll call it, for Central. Six minutes to play in the third quarter. 7-7 seven to seven the score and what uh, we thought we had a couple of uh, high powered offenses but uh, really the, the defensive is kind of one out bending but not breaking inside each other's 30 yard line trap play up the middle to probably Summers yep Stanton Summers the ball here close to the 35 yard line that's where he needs to be for the first down and I think he might have it well that was number 44 Zach Wilson on another tackle for Downport North First down for Central. They'll move the chains. Big first down on their opening uh, drive. So uh, North's drive lasts a good six minutes halfway through the quarter. Nice looking drive. Yeah, both teams have had those type of drives, Pete. Then they get down the red zone, then we have a penalty and a sack and those type of things. And and one of these teams is you know is going to have to learn how to finish. And I like what Skip Eckhart is doing here. He's taking a guy off every play, a guy that uh, maybe isn't trying as hard, we'll say. Option Jones keeps it himself, and he's going to be hit hard, pretty hit hard uh, after about a two-yard gain on the first down. And Jones is slow to get up, and that's not good if you're a Central Blue Devil fan. And he is still down on the turf. It'll be second down and eight from the 37. He took a pretty hard shot. Yeah, I didn't see for sure. It was either number uh, 55, Wildermuth, or number two, Max Sheedy. Both those guys are big hitters uh, for the North defense. And the backup quarterback for Central. Left foot. Well, probably an ankle. And Cross is into the ball game. Wow, that takes away a, a, a threat for Central. Not having Robert Jones, his leadership in the ball game. Jones going to take a seat on the bench. Will be looked at by their fine trainer. Second down and eight from the 37. Handoff to Reed. Reed up the middle across the 40-yard line to the 43-yard line. Well, Downport Central is really sticking with their game plan, Pete. They are going to establish Reed, and Reed's the guy. If he gets a uh, you know, gets any type of hole. He showed the ability in the first half that he can, you know, score from from way out. Next week, we will be back here at the stadium for Bettendorf and Central. Next Friday, around 7:30, September 26th. Third down, Central. Third and three at the 42 for Central. Cross hands it off to the fullback, and he's going to be stopped shy, way shy of the uh, first down marker. It'll be fourth down. And uh, they're going to have to punt it. So Stanton Summers could barely get back to the line of scrimmage. Nice line surge by North. And it's going to be a punting uh, situation. You know, last week, North really did a good job of playing a great uh, second-half defense. 
And Pete, they also got their offense going in the second half, and we'll see how this goes here. Trenton Bibbs into punt. He'll be punting from his own 30-yard line. A pair of Wildcats. Bad snap along the turf. He's going to tuck it under and run for it, and he's going to be hit. Oh, not back around the 38-yard uh, line by number 25, Marty Kirk for, for North. So uh, Bibbs decides to tuck it under. And, you know, he had some running room. I didn't even see Kirk. And he came out of nowhere and uh, made the tackle. I thought he was going to get a first down, but wow, a big play for Central. Just a bad, or a big play for North. It was a bad snap. Yeah, the snap caused the whole thing. And, you know, a high school kid, uh, Trenton Bibbs, didn't know for sure what to do, and he took off running with it. And Central not aligned correctly on defense. They didn't have three guys on the line on the first down play up the middle for North. A nice, healthy gain of about eight yards. North was up, ready to do the play, and Central just breaking out of the huddle. Well, North got the first five yards, Pete, without blocking anybody, and then once they did make contact to the Central's defense, which was five yards off the ball, uh, they got thing. another two or three. Same thing. And uh, for that first place, Central only had ten guys out on the field. Uh, Rashal, the tailback, dots the eye. He'll get the call off of left guard. Scoots across the 30 to the 25 to the 22-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for North, and now you know, Central could use a timeout. Here. Well, North right now is Steve Toft and uh, Byron Stokes. They're doing a real nice job of getting off the ball. They're center Ron Wildermuth doing a super job, and, you know, they're starting to establish themselves here a little bit. First and 10, ball at the 23-yard line of Central. North on the move, I formation. Rushaw fumbles the football. I believe Central might have this one back. We'll see what the referee's signal is. Yep, Central ball. Central recovers at their own 24-yard oh, line. So Central dodges a pretty big bullet because uh, I had a feeling that North was probably going to take that one into the barn. Yeah, it's a big break for the Blue Devils defense, and that was just a matter of dropping the ball without contact, Pete. So I don't know if it was a, you know, a quarterback, halfback exchange, but that ball was put on the turf without contact. First and 10 for the Blue Devils. Ball at their own 24-yard line. We got 245 to play in the third quarter. 7-7, seven to seven, still the score. North and Central for Brady Street Stadium. Hand off to Reed up the middle. Reed dances his way across the 25 to the 29 yard line. It'll be second down for the Blue Devils. And right now, both teams are just kind of slugging it out, and, and they've had a couple mistakes, either penalties and then the fumble. But, uh, you know, this is a typical inner city game with two teams trying right. to come off the big win and not making any mistakes. And two teams suffering from injuries. Pete Cross, the quarterback now for Central. Robert Jones still on the sideline. Second down and five from the 29. Terrence Reed up the middle. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Stuck nicely. Uh, Skip Eckhart's got to be happy with the way his uh, front seven has played tonight against, uh, uh, against, well, the last couple of quarters. Not really the right. first quarter, but... Uh, the way the last few possessions have gone for North on defense has really yeah, got to make it. Right. Happy. Their defense started out slow against Muscatine, and they gave up some big plays early and got behind. But then they came back against Clinton and looked, uh, you know, really good. And tonight they've given up the big read to Terrence Reed early in the game. But since then, yeah. they have really settled down. They're doing a super job of, of wrapping up with their tackles tonight. Third and four from the 30. Big play for both teams. Pitch goes to Reed. Reed. Wow. Met hard by two. Wildcat defenders 75 and 25, I believe, are the tacklers. 75, Cliff Hare, 25, Marty Kirk. Kirk makes another big stop, and Skip Eckhart just uh, really excited on the sidelines for the Wildcats. It'll be fourth and three for Central. They're going to have to punt it back. Yeah, Cliff Hare, Pete, has really played a pretty, a pretty good game so far in the defensive line. He's had a lot of run stops, and... And then also Marty Kirk coming up from the secondary with the big hit. This one's a good snap. The punt's a high wobbler taken and dropped by Overton at the 40. He gets it back, eludes a tackler, and he's going to be dropped right around the 42, 43-yard line by uh, big 75 Austin Howard. It'll be first and 10 for North. Good field position again. Yeah, North dodged a bullet there. Overton kind of took his eyes off the, off the ball, and a lot of returners do that. They like to peek once in a while. Pete, and the ball was on the turf. He picked up the ball, and uh, we got a flag, though, oh. against North, so we'll see how this comes out. Holding the call against North, uh, so that's going to move him back. 
Another 10 yards. You know, this game was moving along at a pretty good clip, uh, except for the long halftime for yeah. homecoming. But uh, all of a sudden now we're getting the penalties and fumbles, and I think both these coaches are getting upset at a few of their players right now. We should tell our fans that our halftime guest uh, bailed out on us this week. We had Mike Reed lined up, the new uh, boys varsity basketball coach of Central, and uh, he is away this weekend. Uh, uh, agreed to it and really didn't think about where he was going this weekend and gave me a call this week and said I can't make it but we'll have uh, Coach Reed at a later date uh, when we have Central again. I think we have Central in Pleasant Valley like game 7 or 8 I believe holding the call against the Wildcats so instead of having first and 10 from the 40 they're going to take it from where the spot from the uh, where the uh, penalty occurred at the uh, 30 36, 37 yard line. It's going to move back all the way to the 26 yard line. You know, Pete, we probably made a mistake there because if we would have had Duncan Reed at halftime, we had that 20 or 30 minutes there. We would have been good. We would have been good because he can definitely talk and he could have covered a lot of subjects. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Uh, they'll regroup, go back in the huddle. Uh, we'll, go back, we'll go out to Pleasant Valley here maybe after this play. 43 seconds. Actually, we'll wait to, to the end of the quarter. Just 45 seconds to go in the half. Handelman, once again, bootleg. He's going to tuck it under and run it himself. He can get a block. He's got a big game all the way down the field, down the hash marks. Penalty flag on the play. He's going to be tackled at the 45-yard line. A good 20-yard game. Might just uh, come back. We'll see what the penalty flag is. Blocking behind the back. The call. Bill Harrell, let's go out to you at Pleasant Valley. Thank you, Bill. Nice job tonight. We'll probably check in with you one more time when that game ends. Uh, 38 to nothing. Pleasant Valley uh, sticking it to uh, North Scott tonight out at Spartan Stadium. Three receiver set for North. Handelman drops back, and his pass is almost intercepted. Nicely batted down. A nice, great diving effort by uh, Javon Green. Is He's had a nice defensive game tonight. Yeah, Javon Green uh, is an excellent linebacker, and the one thing that he brings to this game, Pete, is that he has speed, and he can go sideline to so sideline and also cover guys, and it's hard to find linebackers in high school that can stop the run and to defend the pass as well as Javon Green does. This time, North will go back to their I formation, second down and eight, 26 seconds to play in the third quarter. Handelman drops back. He's going to be... He's going to get rid of the ball into the sideline, and he, he'll elude the sack. Good defensive effort by 22 uh, for Central. Well, that was kind of an ugly play from the beginning. I don't know if they were trying to boot into the boundary or sprint in the boundary, but there's not a lot of room to throw the ball in there, Pete, with the high school hash marks being a little bit wider than the college marks. Third down and eight from the 28. 15 seconds to go in the quarter. We are tied 7-7. Seven to seven. Handelman, short drop. He's going to go up the middle, tuck it under. Not going to get much. They're going to have to punt it back to Central. They'll probably let the clock run out. We'll take a one-minute timeout. We'll come back with the start of the fourth quarter. We've got a good one. Don't go anywhere. 7-7 seven to seven the score. North and Central are deadlocked after three. It's our Mac Game of the Week here on WOC Talk Radio 1420. 27-9, right?
Okay, fourth down for the North okay. Wildcats. They will be punting to open the fourth quarter of action. As their punter, big lineman, gets his foot into the ball. Nice looking kick. That'll uh, be taken by Terrence Reed on the run. Actually, that's Aaron Robinson on the run. He'll cross the 40 to the 45 yard line. So, Central, actually, uh, Central has a guy down. Oh, no, that's number three, Terrence Reed. Man, he wasn't a deep guy, but he. Uh, yeah, Terrence was, was the up guy that yeah. time, and, and it looked like on a block, he might have fell off the block and rolled his ankle. And, it, you know, the central training staff's right out there uh, tending to Terrence. 7-7, seven to seven, our score. But Robert Jones, though, back in the lineup for central. So a lot of injuries. Lot, and Javen Lovelady right. uh, hasn't, hasn't played since the first quarter. Uh, Jones went off a couple of series ago. Pete Cross came in, did a nice job. Now Jones back, but they lose Terrence Reed. First and 10 at the 45-yard line for Central. They'll go with the fullback up the middle. That is Stanton Summers. Summers held to a minimal game. And uh, why? Who, who's their go-to guy now? Well, we'll have to see. They're, they're, you know, they may try and get the ball right now. Back in the number two hands, Robert Jones. They tried to, uh, you know, use that formation they used earlier in the game and try and pop Stanton Summers. But Damport Norris defensive line is doing an outstanding job uh, the whole night. And they're, you know, they've got a lot of guys in there playing hard. Robert Jones, second down and 10. Barks out the signals at the line for the Blue Devils. He'll take a two-step drop. Tries to hit Marcus Terry in the flat. Terry catches it at the 50. Turns around, fights his way up field into Wildcat territory. And he's going to be held, looks like, shy of the first down marker by about a yard. It's going to be third down and one for yep. Central. Those are a type of routes so that Central has to run. You know, Terry's not going to be a deep threat, but inside there with that big body he has, when he catches the ball seven or eight yards downfield, uh, he's a nice target to throw to. Third down and short. We'll see if we see uh, Stanton Summers here up the middle from his fullback spot. Man in motion down the line of scrimmage. Handoff goes to Summers. Summers didn't get there. He needed to go across the 45-yard line, and he was held shy. And now all of a sudden, the central offense is just one-dimensional. Yeah, that was a real good line surge again. Justin Harper, Kenny Faust, uh, they're doing the job right now. Uh, and, and also Cliff here, number 75. Uh, they're doing a nice job in there for Damport North. And North's defense <laughs> uh, has been really surprising in the second half, two weeks in a row now, Pete. Fourth and short. I believe Central will go for it on this down. Fourth and one from their own 46. They need to get to the 44, to, across the 45 yard line for a first down. Jones on the op. Well, it looks like he handed off the second back through and he didn't get it. He was held shy of the 45-yard line. It was number 20, number 20, uh, Romando Rodriguez. So uh, North doing an excellent job here in the second half on defense. We'll head out to uh, Pleasant Valley here in another minute. First and 10 for North, I formation. And I think Lovelady is in at fullback. He is. They give it to him on the trap. A lot of runner across the 45 to the 40-yard line of Central. And he hasn't played in two and a half quarters. But there he is, Javon Lovelady. Well, that's a great call by Coach Havanek uh, and, and with his offense because Lovelady's legs are fresh. We yes. didn't know if they were healthy. And he got him the ball right away. And when you get a running back at, at the high school level at 6'2", 235, uh, he's going to be a tough one to bring down. Lovelady will stay in. Rashaw, the tailback, two receivers split out to the wide side of the field. Handelman will hand it off to Rashaw up the middle, gain him three or four yards. Let's go out to Pleasant Valley, Bill. All right, Bill, thanks for everything tonight. Why don't you head on home, pack it in. Uh, great job tonight, Bill. Second down and seven from the 37 north. With the ball, Rashal up the middle, crosses the 35-yard line to the 34-yard line. It'll be third down and short. 
for the Wildcats. You know, both defensive lines for, for North and Central are playing very well tonight, Pete. They're getting good line surges. They're getting off the ball. And it's been real tough for both teams to move the ball because of the defensive line play. Third down and four. I formation. Rashal up the middle. Got, got some running room. The 25 to the 20 to the 15. And he's going to be, oh, he fumbles it, but the ball stays in bounds or does it go out of bounds? He fumbles it. No, it's still Norse ball. Wow. It goes out of bounds right at the 12-yard line. The ball just popped out of his hand. Yeah, it did. And I don't know if he was trying to switch hands, get the ball to the outside as he turned the corner. But when he did, it looked like the ball just shot out of his hand. And North, uh, you know, probably took a deep breath there on the sideline because that was a nice game, almost a touchdown and the ball just barely got out of bounds. Wow. First and 10 from the 12 for the Wildcats. Rashawn will come out, and Lovelady will replace him at tailback. The fullback now is Ezekiel Davis for North. Lovelady up the middle, stumbles ahead across the 10-yard line all the way down to the 7-yard line. It's going to be second down and five for the Wildcats. Well, that's been an excellent drive for uh, North High. They're just pounding the ball at them. Love ladies back in the lineup. That's given a big boost for the North High Wildcats offense, Pete. 7.55 to play in the football game. 7-7 seven to seven the score. I formation. Love lady dots the eye. He'll take the handoff over left guard. Dances his way into the five-yard line. He's going to be close to the first down marker. I think he might have it. Well, that was a good run. He looked like the big heavy that time. He kept his legs churning, shoulder pads over the ball and just drove the ball almost into the end zone. We check in uh, with uh, some of our sponsors. Oh, maybe. sure. Let's uh, thank you. 11th Street Bar and Grill, home of the famous Tenderloin, L&W Bedding, Hungry Hobo, Maxwell Transmission, and improve your focus at Anderson Brown Eye Care, Coral Ridge Mall, Coralville, and North Park Mall, Davenport. First and 10, actually first and goal for the Wildcats. They have the ball at the, I'm going to say, the two-yard line on the far hash. They'll line up with Love Lady, the tailback. Davis, the fullback. we got 7.40 to play in the game, 7-7 to score. Handelman turns around, hands it off to Love Lady up the middle, into the end zone, touchdown, a two-yard run. For Javen Love Lady. Well, the one thing that Coach Hobanek brings to the North High football program is he knows how to give the ball to a tailback, uh, Pete. And that time with Lovelady uh, coming off that injury, he sat out for two quarters. His legs are fresh. And at 235 pounds, he gets into the end zone. Handelman will stay in to try and tack on the point after touchdown. The snap, the hold, the kick. Ooh, it's a little ugly, but he gets it to go through. 14 to 7, the score. North on top after Javen Lovelady scores a two yard run. We'll take a one minute timeout, come back with the kickoff. It's 14 to 7 to score. North leading Central. It's our Mac game of the week here on WOC 14. Talk Radio 1420. <laughs> Handelman's kick taken at the four yard line by Terrence Reed. Reed, a lot of space. He's across the 35, almost to the 40-yard line. Well, and Terrence Reed is healthy. He's back in the lineup, yeah. and he looked awful good on that play, Pete. Wow. 14-7 to seven the score. North just scored on Javen Lovelady's two-yard run. We've got 7.30 to play in the football game. North 14, Central 7. It's been a classic showdown of these two Davenport Public Schools. First and 10, ball at the 37 yard line. North will start with Reed in the backfield, Jones back and quarterback. Both have returned from injuries that kept him out for a series or two. Jones pitches it to Reed on the option. Reed turns the corner to the 45 to the 40, stiff arms a guy. Gets taken out of bounds right near the 48 yard line. Corey Overton take him out of, took him out of bounds. That was not nice playing as Central's outside blockers could have stayed on those uh, blocks a little bit longer. Pete Reed might have broke that one. 
Hey, Pete, let's thank uh, Maxwell Transmissions, transmission specialist with over 20 years of experience in building bridges, bridges to your future. <laughs> Eastern Iowa Community College. They built something. Yeah, not bridges, bridges. First and 10 from the 47 for Central. I formation, Reed dots the I, slot to the left side of the formation. Straight ahead with Reed. Reed across the 50 yard line to the 49 up north. You know, probably the stats in this game are, are pretty even, Pete. Both teams have had the ball. Uh, seems like about an equal amount of time. Both of them have had some nice drives. It's just that north has finished uh, one more time than Central has. Second down. And six for Central. Ball at the north 49 yard line. We got 6.50 to play in the football game. North leads 14 to 7. They just scored a touchdown a couple minutes ago. Love Lady took it in from two yards out. Extra point was good. Our score at halftime was 7 to 7. So 14 to 7 now. North leading. Jones keeps it on the option. Pitches it to Reed. Penalty flag on the play. Reed dropped down about the 45 yard line. This one will probably come back. It looked like they had a hold on their outside block and nice option play, but uh, Max Sheedy was about ready to make the tackle and it looked like he might have got tackled uh, by a Blue Devil blocker. Holding the call against Central and boy, that's going to move him back 10 yards. Now, now it's going to be back at the 42 yard line instead of the 48 of of North, tough break. Yeah, but the penalties uh, on offenses on uh, have hurt both these teams in the second half. They didn't have much of that in the first half. Second down and 15 from the 42 for Central. As a Reed lines up here at a wide receiver, Jones drops back, looks down the field, throws to Reed. Reed eludes one tackler, two tackler, three tacklers as he goes back into North territory. So they're going to have the ball at the 48 back where they had the ball before the the penalty as Ryan Corbin slowly trots off of the field and he is not moving his left arm. He takes off his helmet and tries to take a sprint on the sideline. We'll see what is ailing big Mr. Corbin. Third down, big play. Third and six from the 48 as Corbin heads to the locker room without hesitating. Jones drops back to pass, and he's going to have to run for it. Eludes one tackler, two tacklers, first down for the Blue Devils as he's going to be brought down just shy of the 40-yard line. I don't know if you had your eye on Corbin, though. He took his yeah, helmet he off, I, he, he went right for the Yeah, and the locker trainer, room. trainer was right behind him. You know, Robert Jones, I think he might be better <laughs> just take it off every time <laughs> he drops back because he really does a nice job making guys miss an open field. He's a slasher. Yeah, he's going to be, you know, both him and, and Reed, a lot of colleges are going to look at him for their athletic ability. First and 10, 520 to play in the ball game. North leads 14 to 7. We've got a good one. High formation on the option. The pitch to Reed. Reed breaks one tackle, can't break a second, and he's going to lose a yard on the play. It'll be second down and 11 from the 42 for Central. Well, that was a nice job by North Secondary. Guys like Max Sheedy, he's been around the ball a lot tonight. Kyle Posey and Corey Overton. Uh, and also the, the little guy out there, Josh Santoro. Very good cover corner. And here comes Corbin trotting on the track. Helmet in hand. Hmm. And you never know, maybe no. he has a little asthma or, or maybe a contact situation. Second down. And 12, Jones, deep drop back. And he eludes one, two, three guys off to the races to the 35. Eludes another one to the 30. And he broke about eight tackles on the play down to the 30 yard line. It's going to be first and 10 for Central. What a play from Robert Jones, their senior quarterback, who again missed two series. He was helped off of the turf because of a, a left ankle uh, problem. You know, the other thing what Jones does in the fourth quarter, by him scrambling, P, you're getting North High guys chasing him all over the field, and they're getting a little tired. You see a lot of guys uh, bent over right now trying to catch their breath. A break in the action because they're going to bring the chain game all the way over from the opposite side of the field. 
And we'd like to thank iowapreps.com, orthopedic and rheumatology associates, excellent in sports medicine, Molino Insurance, Hungry Hobo, and if you need eye care, it's Anderson and Brown Eye Care, Coral Ridge Mall, Coralville, and North Park Mall, Davenport. I believe first down was signaled. Yep, first and 10, four central, 419 to play in the ball game. North 14, central seven, first and 10 from the 30 near hash mark. Blue Devils working toward the stadium end, going south to north here at Brady Street Stadium. Jones under center. Calls out which way he's going. Blitz on the play. Jones rolls out. He's going to be taken down for a major loss on the play. Could not elude big number 75. Cliff Hare. Hare gets up and celebrates, as he should. About a seven or eight yard loss for the, the the Blue Devils, and that one hurts. Yeah, it does. Coach Eckert decided to go with the blitz that time, and he got good pressure. You know, Cliff Ayer has some speed for a defensive lineman, and he was able to capture uh, Jones from behind. Second down and long for the, the Blue Devils. Ball at the 38 of North. They trail North. Central trails North 14 to 7 late here in the fourth quarter. As Jones drops back to pass, hits a guy in the flat across the 35 to the 30, breaking tackles to the 25-yard line. They get a lot of that back. That's number three, Terrence Reed, uh, the receiver for Nor or, uh, Central. Well, uh, late in the fourth quarter here, Pete, what, North, what Central's trying to get done is they're getting the ball in their two athletes' hands any way they can. This is a good job by Matt Vernon, uh, offense, and trying to move the ball here. Third and eight. You get the clock running. We're under three minutes to go. They're taking an awful lot of time. It's, uh, up to the line. They got an eye formation. Reed dots the eye. Jones under center. They get the play off. Up the middle. I think he missed the handoff. Jones missed the handoff on the play. It was a broken play. He went right up the middle. He doesn't really gain anything. And he is slow to get off, off of the turf. Actually, uh, I think his shoe came off. It's going to be fourth down. Central's got to go for it. Yeah, they definitely do. And there was a big hole on the right side there. And I'm sure Robert Jones would like to have that handoff back as if, if Terrence Reed could have gotten the ball, they would have had the first down plus a little more. So uh, Central calls a timeout. We'll set the uh, scenario for you. It's fourth and four from the 25. Ball placed in the middle of the field in between the hashes. We've got two minutes and 27 seconds to play in the ball game. The score is North 14, Central 7. The score was tied 7 7 and a half. Uh, Javen Lovelady, uh, who was injured in the first quarter, came back and had a couple of big runs on a short drive, which put the Wildcats ahead. He capped it off with a two-yard plunge into the end zone. That at the 7.30 mark of the fourth quarter. So with two and a half to play, North 14, Central 7, in a game that really both schools have to have in the win column. And this is uh, Central's homecoming, so you know they definitely want to win. Makes the dance go a lot better. Uh, these are tough calls, though, Pete. Fourth and four, there's a lot of different things that go through your mind. You got bootleg passes, you got the big Terry kid out there, 84, and, all, and also you've got this scrambling ability of Robert Jones and Reed, so we'll see what the Blue Devils well, are going to do here. Reed is split out with Marcus Terry. This is probably going to be a pass since Reed is not lined up in the eye back. Fourth and four, Jones under center, rolls out. Looking down the middle, got Reed. It's caught at the oh, five-yard wow. line. Beautiful play, Jones to Reed. First and goal at the five-yard line for the Blue Devils. Boy, that was a very tough catch, and Jones had pressure in his face, and he just, it was kind of a timing play, and Terrence Reed, you know, turned around at the right side, makes yeah. a spectacular catch. And you knew where it was going. Right, and North had good coverage on that play. That was just a was. excellent play by Terrence Reed. Great effort on both sides of the ball, defense and offense, but defense or offense comes away with uh, that one. So first and goal from the five for the Wildcats. Eye formation, Reed dots the eye. Jones sends a guy in motion down the line of scrimmage. Reed up the middle, into the end zone, touchdown Blue Devils. Touchdown Blue Devils. Well, there was no doubt what uh, Coach Vernon was going to do uh, to get this ball in the end zone. He has two really good athletes in Jones and, 
and Terrence Reed, and he made sure that Terrence Reed got the touch. Nice run, excellent blocking by the Blue Devil offensive line. Mims, Adam Mims will come in to try a pretty important extra point. This to tie the game with two minutes to go. The snap is good. The hold, the kick, it's a little low. It's good though. It is good. <laughs> We're not sure we had to wait for that one. Not a lot of height. No, not height at all, but it was end over end and it, uh, oh, there's a flag on the play. Well, the extra point should count. It, I think it's something after the play. And if it is, it should go on the kickoff, but we'll see what happens. Stanton Summers is out chatting with the referees. He was the fullback on the play. He's had a nice uh, effort tonight. And Central just, if, if it's on North, they're, they're gonna wanna keep the point. Oh, it was running into the kicker. And they declined the penalty, they'll take the point. So 14 to 14, John, this is the game that we hope for tonight. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, when you get two teams like this battling, you got all the fans still staying in here. Concession stands going well. Uh, sales have gone well here tonight, Pete, because of the crowd. And for Damport Central homecoming, Damport North trying to get to two to one. Uh, maybe OT game. Right. I wouldn't mind. Uh, um, I'm thinking that might be Josh Santoro. Can't quite tell the number. Kicking off is not Mims. It's going to be a lineman. Number, boy, he's a big guy. 55. Well, that's Ryan Corbin. And Corbin lines up five yards back. Ball spotted at the 40. Corbin on the ground. And uh, it's going to be taken at the 20 yard line. North's going to have great field position. Right up the middle, untouched. Off to the races to the 50, the 40, the 30. Is over 10. He's going to score. Any penalty flags? I don't see any. North sideline going nuts. An 80-yard kickoff return for Corey Overton. Well, Pete, uh, I don't know exactly, you know, what was called on the kickoff, but that was definitely a squib kick. And unfortunately for Central, that ball bounced up perfectly into Corey Overton's hand, and he never broke stride. He got that ball, got in the middle of the pack, broke outside, and just ran away from the Blue Devil defense. Well, Corbin kicked off. And maybe the reason he kicked off is because he does squibs better. Uh, they just didn't field it. I'm just not a big fan of the squib kick, uh, Pete, because exactly that. And even if, even if uh, the ball doesn't go, you know, even if the squib kick is executed perfectly, it still wasn't kicked very deep. And either way, North would have had good field position. The extra point is up and good by Hamelman, but uh, we have a flag on the play. And uh, offsides called against the offense. Well, there's still plenty of time left. Yep. There's two minutes, two minutes left. North has to make this extra point, and then we'll find out what, you know, with Terrence Reed in the Central's uh, offense, they can score from all over the place, too. You know, we've I've called a lot of games here the last three or four years with both North and Central, and, and to see North's reaction to that kickoff return is something I haven't seen here. No, it's pretty exciting for, for the Wildcats, and... You know, Skip Eckert's trying to get that program turned around where they, you know, win more games than they lose. And he, if he gets this one tonight, he's going in the right direction. Handelman will have to do it again, this time five yards deep. But the kick is still up and good. So 21 to 14, our new score, Central scores. And then North returns the favor on the kickoff with 2.02 to play. Our score, North 21, Central 14. and. And North was lined up ready to go for the return, and Central took its time on the sideline. Hey, we got uh, boy, that's just, uh, just devastating. Well, you got to be able to defend every play, and that's why special teams are important in football, Pete, whether it's a bad snap or a, a big field goal, or in that case, an excellent return by Corey Overton gives North the lead. Okay. Again, a fine. Handelman. Goes on the ground. It's going to be taken by an up guy at the 25, to the 30, to the 40, to the 42, 43 yard line is number 47. That is Mark Stringham. A junior? Another good return, though. And once again, the ball was quick kicked. And, and it gives Central the ball an excellent field position to run their two minute offense, Pete. Or a minute 40, 54 offense. There you go. 
154 to play in the ball game. Central has it at their own 43 yard line. They have to go for a touchdown in order to tie or with a two point conversion, take the lead. They trail 21 to 14. Summers lines up in the backfield alone. Three receiver set, Jones motioning to his receivers. He'll drop back, three step drop under pressure and he is gonna be taken down. Actually, he's gonna gain a yard. Almost sacked on the play. Clock running, second down and nine. 140 to play in the football game. Cliff Hare keeps giving uh, a lot of pressure for their Wildcats defensive line. He's been all over the field again tonight. Three receivers set. Two backs in the backfield. Jones, minute 30 to play. Quick pitch around the right end, and he's gotta get out of bounds. He gets out of bounds across the 50 to the 48 yard line. Number 20, Ramondo Rodriguez. That's a nice call. They kind of mixed up their offense a little bit, and, and now we got a big third down play coming up. Certainly four down territory. Well, it's always four down territory now, P. We're yep. down by seven, and, and right now I'm sure Central may come back with a play similar to what they had or try and get the ball to read on the outside. 122, third and one from the North 48 Central, looking for the game tying or go ahead touchdown. Jones drops back to pass. He's gonna sprint out. He's gonna have a first down and a lot of running room to the 40, to the 30, to the 25. He stayed in bounds. Oh, he crossed the 25, he stayed in bounds. It's a first down, down to the 21 yard line. And wow. Central, I believe they have two timeouts. They're gonna line up on the ball. Boy, he should have. Yeah, he should have. out of bounds. And if anybody should know that, the quarterback should yeah. know that, Pete. But he, uh, you know, was stumbling the whole way. Right, the whole 35 yard gain. Uh, he just. You know, turf trip. Yeah. Split backs, three receiver set, clock moving, 110 to play. Jones looks over to the sideline. Coach Verdon tells him what to run. Jones drops back, three step drop. Looking for Reed. The ball, I believe, might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage, so that's not bad. Stops the clock. It's second down and 10 from the 23. We got 101 to play in the, in the ball game. You know, the guy that's really played well for Downport North's defensive line, uh, Cliff Heron, and what he does too, he really brings the heat as a pass rusher, and, and that really helps out the West or the, the North High defense. Minute to go. Second down and 10. Summers in the backfield along with Rodriguez. Three receiver set. Jones drops back to pass, picks up a nice block. Jones. Is going to run it. It's got to get out of bounds. It'll get out of bounds. Now they got to use a timeout. They'll use a timeout on the play. It's going to stop the clock with 50 seconds to play. And uh, he didn't see anybody open downfield. I believe they have one left because I know they used one. It was calling one a timeout hardcore. And they're going to move it back five yards. And what is that? I'm not sure, Pete. That's the one you have to All look right. up in the, in the program with those funny guys there. I'm not sure exactly what it was. What call was that? Yeah, it's that not, was it's, delay of game, I guess. It's not in my picture book here. The referee, oh, I there it is. That. Delay of I game. I thought delay of game was both arms across each other. Yeah. Well, I guess it was delay of game. I don't know how that could have been delay of game. Yeah, I, I, especially after a timeout. Right, I mean, and they, they didn't get the ball set. It's kind of a strange call. And now the head official. 84, Marcus Terry, 6'3", 235. And really, if you're central, Pete, all you need is a first down here. Yeah, yeah. Twin receivers, that's Reed and Terry to the wide side of the field. Jones will roll out in that direction, trying to get some depth. And he wings it down the sideline. Terry makes the catch at the 10-yard line. Wow, what a beautiful catch. Well, I really like that guy as a possession receiver. He's not a, a you know, a a deep receiver type threat, but he knew where the boundary was. That's a big time throw there on the run, going to his left by Robert Jones, but even a bigger catch by Marcus Terry. His toes were almost out of bounds. How do you, uh, that, that, was, that was a pro catch. That really was. That was a well executed play and, and give Robert Jones a lot of credit too. He threw that ball right in the money. 43 seconds to go. 21 to 14 to score, North hanging on. Central draw, oh, fumbled the snap, who's got it? North pointing, saying that they might have it, and the official steps in, nope. 
Central's got it, but they have to burn a timeout. 33 seconds to play. A wasted down. Boy, I wouldn't want to see a game in. This has been such a great game tonight, Pete. You would not want to see the game in like that. Marcus Terry, uh, the 6'3", 235-pound receiver. If they can get the ball up in the air, he, he usually catches it. 33 seconds to go. Second down and 10. Central out of timeouts. Ball at the 10-yard line. Jones under center. He's going to drop back. He sprints out. Chased on the play. Eludes one tackler. Throws it. And it's going to go incomplete. The pass was short of its intended receiver. Big number 89, Cody Green. So it's going to be third down. And again, not a bad play by Jones because he avoided the sack. He got out here in open field. And he was smart enough to get the oh. ball thrown away. Uh, well, we got a procedure call. So did that play not happen then? Well, if you're north, you're probably going to decline the penalty. And, uh, Does that mean they have to put time back, back on the clock? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Otherwise, they would have blown it dead right away, Pete. Hmm. 26 seconds remain on the clock. 21 to 14 the score. North clinging to a touchdown lead. The call right now that Central could make that would really help them um, is to get big 84 here, Terry, into the short side of the field and then run your fade route and let him jump up and try and catch it, but they got him to the wide side. Reed and Terry to the wide side. Jones will roll out in that direction. He needs a block. He throws it into the end zone. It's going to be caught by Reed right at the goal line. Clock is going to be running. There's 17 seconds to go. Central hurries up, tries to get set up. They're going to get a snap off, but it's, is it fourth down? No, it's third down. Nine seconds, eight seconds. They, snap, they uh, throw the ball down. They spike the ball. There's going to be one play left. Wow. It's going to be fourth down. We've got four and a half seconds remaining. What a game. What do you do? <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's you a can great run play the ball that. It doesn't matter. They throw that ball into Terrence Reed's hand, and Overton comes from nowhere and puts a wallop on uh, Terrence Reed and knocked him straight backwards. Otherwise, he's in the end zone. What a game. Running back like Terrence Reed, uh, to me, you know, they're going to go to double tight, and I'm, I'm assuming they're going to give the ball to Reed here. I formation in the backfield. This is it. The ball game is on the line. Man in motion down the line. Fumble the snap. Jones fumbled the snap. He's got to roll out. He's got to make something happen. Nothing. He gets sacked on the play. He tries to throw a pass. He fumbled the ball, and I think he hurt himself on top of that. And North holds on for a 21-14 victory. North moves to 2-1. Central drops to 0 and 3. Wow. Yeah, it all goes back, Pete. The most important play in football is the center quarterback exchange. You don't have a play without the ball, and that's exactly what happened there. It looked like uh, maybe Jones might have pulled out a little early. You never know on a play like that. Very disappointing loss for the Blue Devils. Uh, you know, for the North High Wildcats, you know, it's a game of inches. Yeah. And that, that was played goal line to goal line for the full uh, game, Pete. An exciting, exciting game here at Brady Street Stadium. Well, John, where do you think he was going on that fourth time? You know, I think they, well, they had the guy in motion. Looked like a power play. Looked like they were going to try and run over the left side to Reed. And they just didn't get the snap. And tough, tough break for the Blue Devils. 21-14, mm, to 14, our final score. North holds on in uh, one of the best ball games we've seen in, in quite some time. Hopefully they'll get better. Uh, hopefully they'll keep getting better. Uh, let's pause. We'll take a commercial break. We'll come back, go over, uh, go over the scoring. North holds on. They defeat Central 21 to 14 on the final play of the game. It's Mac Football here on WOC Talk Radio 1420. <laughs> 